to get to that leg again is David. Oh, oh look at that! She's a perfect example of an athlete who takes her craft very serious. Oh, oh Davis! One of the most dominant female competitors on the planet right now. She keeps her technique sharp all year round. A nice knee cut there by Fionn. She's always asking questions. She's always learning, adding to her game. I want to roll with Tarek again. I want to get some tips off the of the Tarek platter. And I'm excited to see her go out there and do her thing. Being on the road and having all these changes in relationships and moving and all this stuff. I'd love to have a gym one day. That's like something I'm really looking forward to. Fionn is a very tough competitor. The, the European girls kind of like look up to her because she's having a lot of success. She beat a lot of good names. Fionn Davies in under three minutes submits world champion Jazari Matuda. I got used to growing up with not like a ton of close friends and I think it was very easy for me to be like, well, lone wolves, like, even though wolves are alone, they're in a pack. Like I haven't been this happy training ever. And Fion has just come out here and shown just how dominant she is as a competitor. It doesn't matter the rule set, it doesn't matter the location, she comes to fight. And she's the queen of the IBJJF Nogi Worlds 2023. Let's talk about your history in training. You did judo before, right? Yeah. I started judo when I was about seven or eight years old. Um, both my parents work in mental health, so they had to like learn how to um, restrain people. And they sent them to judo, basically. <laughs> and my mother really, really liked it. Um, and then I think the intention was for my brother to do it. And then I started to like get on the mat with him. Because <laughs> I always trained in male dominated environments since I was a kid. Like I loved rugby, <laughs> I loved yeah. every sport that was for boys. Basically anything my brother did, I would be like, I want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and then he would quit. <laughs> I ended up being the one who was really into it. And I, I always got told, oh, you're really strong. And like, obviously when you're a kid, you get told, you get complimented in something and you're just gonna go towards that then. I always identified as like, I'm good at judo so I just wanted to stay in that realm I think so I don't know I think that maybe pushed me to be competitive I don't think it's like you know I, was, I wasn't born competitive but I feel like you get that reinforcement and you want to protect that sort of identity that you form you're a killer and a, a nice little shy blonde girl at the same time it's amazing to see this change between the two I was really really like crippled with shyness when I was growing up like I couldn't like not even I just couldn't speak to people yeah. like it was like yes or no answers is oh, what sure. you get out of me yeah, so that didn't really help with my like social status. Um, that's very easy to bully. Um, so I didn't have many friends, was kind of made fun of a little bit. And then it was just nonstop competing, training every night, competing a lot of the weekends. It was never something I chose to do. And I think I wanted to explore other things and see if I had other interests. Like it was always something I did from like a very young age. And then I saw things about Ronda Rousey were coming up as well. And I just thought, oh, I want to give that a go. People were calling her beautiful. And I'd never seen someone who looked like me be called beautiful. I was just like, what's a man or, or whatever, you know, mm. or like arm wrestle me. <laughs> so I I started jujitsu, but with MMA as well, mainly. Like I just saw Ronda Rousey and this guy in, in my school actually did was doing MMA and he'd won the Cage Warriors title. Okay. Um, Brett Johns, he's, yeah, he's yeah, in the no, UFC, no, he's gone yeah. to Bellator. Savage. And then I found Jiu Jitsu and that was the love of my life. <laughs>
I got silver at World Pro that year. I won $5,000, so I was living off that. So I was like, I'll go to Ireland for a bit and just train. Especially in the last year with a lot of European grapplers in particular, Tommy Langacker, uh, Esmond Matheson, a bunch of guys from Europe, with much shorter time training. Uh, have caught up to the level of the multiple time Black Belt World Champions very, very quickly. And uh, I believe Fionn is part of that uh, exact generation. And it's a really good chance for her to show that European Jiu Jitsu is on the level of uh, World Jiu Jitsu and that uh, the training mythologies, the training uh, methods are getting better and better. And you can be so much better, so much faster with so much less time. So uh, it's a really good chance for her to prove her level to everybody. And it's a really good chance to show the level of uh, European Jiu Jitsu just in general. They were doing what I wanted to do, which is travel, compete against the best people. So they'd go to Europeans every year. That's what they did. They'd go to Worlds every year, like routinely as a big group. And like having a team compared to having no one there, this is so much better. Um, I, used, I was at first nervous having people there. Now I like thrive off that support. I believe, you know, being Fionn's coach and seeing her train every day, that her level is of that of the Black Belt World Champions. Nice knee cut there by Fionn. Yep. Wow. Oh, oh Fionn shoot the back there. That's a triangle. Can't tell from the camera yeah. angle, but Fionn has a triangle locked here. Wow. Fionn standing up to defend. Fionn Mosquita is in danger at this, this point. This is a arm straight arm straight arm Wow. Was she going to tap? Fionn Davis has the arm. Wow. Can she submit Fionn Mosquita? It's arm on. fully extended. It, wow. He is so tough, We man. talked about the tournament of upsets. Can so Fionn Davies pull off one of the greatest upsets in female jiu-jitsu history? Fionn wow. Davies twisting and contorting that she's arm. She's tapping. And she does it! Fionn wow. Davies submits Amazing. Bia Amazing. Incredible performance. She was such an underdog, wow. man. That blew my mind. Like I've struggled with self-belief so much, like through competitions uh, for such a long time. Like I've had such imposter syndrome in tournaments. I've like, got that written down. I was going to talk to you about Imposter yeah. syndrome. <laughs> yeah, because I have a feeling that a lot of really high level, uh, very well respected performers or, or instructors or whatever it is, athletes have that feeling, but people don't realize, you know, people at medium levels or low levels will feel the same. So, yeah. you know, talk to me about it. Yeah. So I've always felt like, especially in the black belt division now, uh, like, because the thing is, I'm, I'm quite new to the sport, relatively, during, um, and compared to some of the girls who've been competing since they were five years old, they all know each other, they've all fought each other so many times, and then, especially as one of the very few non-Brazilians, I think it's easy to feel imposter syndrome and be like, how am I even doing well against these people? Mm. And I felt like that for a while, I was like, it must be a bit of a fluke. I don't know, just, you know, I feel like a lot of luck has come into it as well, which is true. Like, I have been very lucky as well. Um, but yeah, it was very difficult to sort of see myself as one of their peers because I'd looked up to them for so long and been such fans. Um, and I still am a mm. fan, but yeah, like, you shouldn't be fangirling when you're meant to be fighting these girls. We are in New York, in the Bronx is where I live, temporarily. I wanted to live in the city, but I had a bit of an idealized view of it. I thought, oh, I'll live in the city, it'd be so cool, but I can't afford to live in Manhattan. It's very, very, very fast paced compared to what I'm used to. Like I lived in Wales, obviously, where I'm from. And then I also lived in Dublin, which is a relatively big city, but nowhere near the same size as this. And I was like trying to find a gym to kind of settle at mostly. Um, I was going between like two gyms, Essential and uh, Marcelo's as well. So I was kind of going between the two and just kind of trying to find my feet and see where I enjoyed most. Two last penetration steps, we're gonna partner up. Lost my voice, but we're still here though. <laughs> we're still here. I'm excited, I'm excited. We got a good group. We got Fionn coming up. We got Renee coming up. Solid room, just getting these guys ready, getting these guys some good looks, some good drilling, some good rounds. I'm excited. I'm excited, it's gonna be a good day today. What's Fionn like? Uh as a student, you know, as a training partner. Man, she she is a, she is a great person to have around. She really is. Uh, aside from her being a super skilled athlete and jiu-jitsu fighter, she's a really cool person, very down to earth. So I always tell the story, like when she first came over, she came over as a high level athlete, right? And I gotta say from day one, she's been very open-minded, which made me very excited to work with her even more so. Obviously now I'm, I'm good training with JT and he's coaching me and that's fucking amazing like that's the dream yeah. and he's such a brilliant coach and and I'm excited mm -hmm. to be in New York and to learn from him and and he's so he's always kind always kind and I want to follow that example because sometimes I'm not kind 
um, but I don't want to be like that. So I'm gonna, you know, yeah, <laughs> try to fucking copy that. You know, like that's a great example. Someone who who would hold me accountable if I wasn't yeah. nice. I think this how positive JT is. Like he really is a brilliant leader. I think that kind of is what like charges the whole room. Um, he works so hard and he's very, very positive and I think it kind of just trickles down to everyone. Um, I was saying to someone the other day, like, I haven't been this happy training ever. Like, I, I used to get kind of upset in training sometimes, you know, like, you have off days, but I have so much less off days here. Because um, even when I'm struggling, I feel like everyone will address it straight away and, like, lift me up and it, it really is impressive. Yeah, it's cool. Beautiful chair, Sam. Oh, oh, right for the finish. Phil Davis. It's unusual lapel control. Here it's over. Evo attack. attack. That's fully locked down. That's oh, this is all down. This could be on here. It's just making a play in the arm here. Arm again. Oh, this Davis is in trouble. That leg was at full extension. How on earth did she not tap to that? You get to that leg again. It's oh, oh, look at this. Big, big, big oh. bro. What moment of this match here? Oh, wow. Peon Davis is your 2022 ADCC World Champion. The first ever British born Brazilian Jiu Jitsu Black Belt World Champion. Her performance was amazing, man. Amazing. She she followed her game plan to a T. She was uh, perfect in all her movements. She was focused out there and she was precise out there. And that's exactly what you need to be if you want to become an ADCC champion. One of the toughest tournaments in the world to win, if not the toughest, in my opinion. And uh, she went out there and handled her business and she brought back home that world title. Man. And then after that, I was absolutely miserable. Like, which is crazy, and you can't say it. Now I can say it because I'm not in that place, but you can't really say it because it's like, oh, is it everything you thought it would be? And it's, it wasn't. And I was obviously proud to achieve those things, but um, yeah, it's, it's really it's really hard to look up and realize I've completely depleted all other areas of my life. I've moved away from all my closest friends, my former, my former team. Uh, that was really difficult, and... Mm. <laughs> I think people want to hear the opposite course but like for example like I won Gee Worlds and ADCC last year and after Gee Worlds I've just felt empty and numb mm -hmm. even though this is my biggest goal and then ADCC the night before the final I was like crying to one of my best friends because I was like I'm literally crying and I was like if I win like I know I'm gonna be miserable because this is like the last goal off my list like what else now yeah and I was so like that sounds really super I wanted to win but and then I won and then I was miserable for like two months after and I, I had friendship breakups which are somehow worse because how do you navigate those two um so all those things kind of happened at the same time as achieving my biggest dreams and it was like i look around and who am i celebrating with so i was like going around teaching seminars i was a little bit injured like i had some injuries um so I wasn't able to like train very much, so, but I was just going around teaching seminars, so doing loads of travel, trying to distract myself, and I was so down, like so miserable, just being like, this is it. Like, it didn't feel the way, I, like my life hasn't completely changed. Lots of good things have come from it. Like, and now like I'm much more happy and content um, about it, but it's such a strange feeling. I think it's common as well. I think it's a lot more common than people mm -hmm. like realize. When you think about your career, and not even just your career, but just your life in general, because you are so much more than just jujitsu, what excites um, you about the next me, 15 years? Probably, I'm really excited to be a coach and have my own gym. It's something I'm putting off mm. because I am really lucky that I can compete and solely focus on competing. Like, I'm going to be teaching soon um, in New York, but uh, my focus will still be competition. I'm not going to teach much. It's only going to be like three classes a week. Like, that's it. Um, and that's just more like, you know, I'm seeing it as mm. this is like my apprenticeship on how to run a gym myself. My, probably my biggest passion is teaching. I love it so much. It's just very hard to fully commit to coaching someone or, you know, I could teach class, but I'm not technically like a coach because I feel like there's, there's a lot more that comes with that and I'm not in a place to be able to do that, um, unfortunately. But it's something I really look forward to doing in the future. I'd love to have a gym one day. That's like something I'm really looking forward to. Teaching, it makes me a better instructor, but 
um, overall, like, I really want to be a really good coach and I really want to have a extensive team. Like, a really, I want to have a good team. I want to have a competitive team and a, and a competitive female team as well. You know, like, I want, obviously, I want men to come to my gym too, but um, I, you know, as a woman, as a, <laughs> as a, fe- a future female coach, I would like to have a, a really strong competitive women's team because yeah. I think as much as I love competing and it's like my number one thing that I love in all the world, it's a very, and I know you probably know this yourself, like it's a very selfish sort of pathway. Mm-hmm. And it's something I'm kind of putting off more than, more than anything, just because I know that this freedom I have right now to be able to train full time, to be able to compete and travel is really, really rare. And I, I, I don't want to take it for granted. Oh, I love it so much. I can't wait to be a coach and stuff. <laughs> and we are back with the lightweight final here at the 2023 World Jiu-Jitsu Championships. This is a rematch of the 2022 final. See Fionn diving in there for... Nice little sweep from Fionn Davis. Oh, Janaina turns it into an arm bar. Janaina turns it into a triangle She's still shooting. Now. She's still shooting. We thought she was out for a second, but she is still shooting up for this triangle as Fionn tries to desperately punch that right arm through to get back into a traditional close guard. Right? She was trying to wrestle up. Shot for a low single, which not surprised to see because Fionn has such beautiful wrestling we talked about earlier. Passing through on the spider side. Not enough to get through, but now she nice may have a look attempts. at the back. Switching out to the legs of Janaina. She may try to hip over for a knee bar here, but Fionn smartly bringing her knee out of the angle that is needed for the knee bar. Janaina Safe so, so far. Beautiful knee bar attacks. She may expose her back in the process, though, if she doesn't find the right angle. And Fionn has the collar grip underneath Janaina's head. She is working her way to the back. What she needed was a chest. Now she gets the hooks. To the back. Fionn Davis in a great position here. Time has expired, and Fionn Davis is your 2023 lightweight world champion. She wins the title for the second year in a row. Absolutely tremendous performance. What an absolutely incredible day. I have the best job in the world for me, and everyone's best job in the world is different for them. But I get to do something that I loved as a hobby, as my career, and that is amazing. And I don't take it for granted at all, because especially during COVID, <laughs> when I, mean, I couldn't do that, it was like, wow, I really had the best job. So I know that those hard times come out to being really, really fruitful. Fruitful. <laughs> <laughs> Very fruitful. <laughs> a fruitful harvest. Um, but it takes a while to see it, to see the fruits of your labour. <sighs> There's a lot of fruit analogies. <laughs> I love fruits.